Hi folks, thanks for joining me for this week's Stillwater tutorial. What you see in the vise is a super slow sinking buzzer. So without further ado, let's get into it. The hook in the vise then is a Hanak H260 barbless hook. This one's at size 10, it's on a heavy wire and it's in black nickel. The thread I'm going to be using today is from Semperfy and it's the Nano Silk at 12 volt in black. So as always with the Nano Silks, first thing to do is to get a little touch of super glue onto the shank of the hook and then I'm going to use my thread just to spread that up and down the shank. And that just helps, um, stops body rotation in the fly. So I'm going to bring my thread all the way back, past the point. I'm going to stop approximately where a barb would be on a hook and remove my waist end. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is add my ribbon. What I'm going to be using is some of this stuff. Now, I don't think you can get it anymore, to be perfectly honest. It's... Uh, from Steve Parton, the late great Steve Parton, and uh, it's called Spartan Buzzer Wrap. It's a clear sort of material, but I'm going to use that to my advantage. I've already taken a little bit off already. I believe Venyards make a similar product called Buzzer Wrap, and uh, you, you'll probably have to get a hold of that if you want to use this type of uh, body. So what I'm doing now is I'm coming around just slightly around the bend of the hook and I'm going to stop my thread there. Next I'm going to add in my body material and what I'm using is some of this uh, peacock herald. So it's been dyed black and I've already selected two strands from my string here. And what I'm going to do is I've already run my fingers up this and just broke away the, the very tips of it because that's where it's at its weakest. So where I've broken it away, I'm simply going to come in with my snips now, straighten the whole thing up and catch that in like so. Then I can just catch in the whole lot. Don't be overly worried about uh, touching turns at this point. Bring your thread all the way up to the eye and what I'm going to do is put five or six turns in at the eye because I'm going to use the rotary function on my vise to actually put the body material down. So I've just got a hold of the the peacock herald and I'm just going to use the rotary to turn that. I'm not overly worried about what the rib's doing. Uh, you might not even be able to see it but it's quite literally twisting around my vice, <laughs> which will make my life a bit of a misery later. So um, as April sort of fades into the background a little and uh, all the deep buzzer fishing is, is starting to slow up a bit because as the water warms up through the month of April, uh, the fish start to move up in the water column a little bit more. And what you need to do is slow down the, the rate of descent of your flies and one way of doing that is like this um, the, the super varnished fancy buzzers that you see on Facebook they look really good in photographs and that but the trouble is they sink extremely fast when you cast them out into the water they fall through the water column very quickly and that's um, half the advantage so I've locked that in with my thread just going to pull away my excess like so okay that's looking pretty good again I'm going to bring my thread all the way to the eye and I'm going to put four or five turns in because I'm going to again use the rotary function now before I bring my rib up what I want to do is colour it slightly and this is the beauty of this stuff this Spartan stuff I'm sure the buzzer wraps the same but I've got a pro marker here it's uh, red or um, ruby, I think they like to call it in ProMarker, but it's red, basically. So I'm going to take that off, and I'm going to run my ProMarker up the inside of this. 
Now with a lot of these sort of materials, you do need to add a little bit of super glue generally because they're quite fragile and once uh, the trout's teeth starts wearing on it, the fly starts to come undone. But with this, it's hard enough that that's not required. So again, I'm going to use the rotary function and I'm going to get one complete turn just onto the shank of the hook before I start coming up through my peacock herald body and it may be difficult to see on the camera but that red is glinting through and it looks really nice you can use any colour you like, orange probably works quite well but I just like red seems to be a good uh, combination for me so I brought that all the way up to the top I'm going to get a couple of wraps over while I've got my hands on the rib and then I'll get a couple of wraps in front of that material before I come in and just remove my waist okay next thing I want to do is add my thorax cover and what I'm going to use for that is some of this it's uh, from Fish On it's the ultra dry yarn very similar to Aero Wing or Antrim, if uh, you prefer. But I've not prepared this because I want to show you how it comes off the uh, the rack. It's quite a thick material when it comes, uh, and and obviously that's far too thick for the the thorax cover of this. So what I do is I use my little comb here at the end of my dubbing brush, and I comb it out. And I'm only looking for maybe quarter of that. So just off camera, I'm going to take what I require for this fly. In fact, I wonder if I can do it on camera. Let's try. So I've just selected a little bit. I'm going to take the tiniest bit. I'll put that to the side for now. And what I've got is about quarter the width of the ultra dry. Then I'm going to come in with my thread and catch that into place and that's looking about right so what I've got is about a third of the, the body of the fly just maybe another couple of wraps needed there next I'm going to add some cheeks and what I'm using for the cheeks is some conch candy this is the uh, hot orange goose bites and I have prepared these actually so all I've done is I want the thicker bit of the goose by it and what I've done is cut a little triangle in it and I've done the same with the other side so I'm going to catch my side in first and it's going to protrude about an eighth of an inch past where I've got the thorax cover now I just want a couple of loose wraps and then I'm going to do the other side and the reason I've done my side first is I've now got a guide as to where the cheek should lie and again a couple of loose wraps I'm just going to tilt my vice to check on your side I'm going to bring that down a little once I'm happy that the bayet's sitting properly I can then really come down hard on it and once I've got it locked in, keeping tension on the thread, I can just remove that waste. Very gently. My vice is just moving about a little bit there. I might need to tighten up the uh, sprocket a bit. But let's persevere with this at the moment. So that's all looking pretty good so far. Next then, for the thorax, I'm going to be using some Cook's Hill seals fur this is genuine seals fur and they call it black claret it's it's pretty much black and before and always with seals fur i like to use a little bit of uh, tacky wax just makes it easier to work with so i'm just going to come in add a bit of that to my thread uh, there's several flies that you can use actually that will keep your 
your sort of buzzers quite high in the water. Um, pheasant tails, crunchers, that sort of thing will stay high in the water column. And um, sometimes you just need it up, up where the fish are. A fish is more likely to come up from the depths to take a fly. Uh, in fact, it's definitely going to come up rather than look down for food. Or a trout anyway, should I say. So I've dubbed on my uh, seals for, and the tacky wax has really helped with that. Then I'm going to come back to the start of my thorax and start to build a little rugby ball shape. Now, at this point, I've got a little bit of uh, seals fur left and I want to separate that from the remainder of the rubbing. I don't want to take it off, but I do want to separate it because I want a bit of thread here. And before I do anything else, I'm going to add a tiny little bit of wax, which is going to help me to grip my thorax. So I've got the thorax here now. I'm going to bring it over the top. And then with that bit of thread that I've exposed, I can catch it in and I only need maybe two or three turns. Now with a little bit of seals fur that I've still got left on my thread, I'm going to push that up, lift my thorax cover back, and I'm going to come in and just add that seals fur like so. What that does is kick up the thorax cover into the position I want it. Then to finish off I simply get a little bit of UV resin onto my thread and bring in my quick finish tool. So, just make sure that's tight. Then with your scissors, you can simply remove your waste. And then give it a blast with a UV light. The other fly that I was thinking of, I've been racking my brains, um, that will, will do a similar job to this fly is called the muskins. And uh, I'll stick a little video up in the, the corner there to uh, a tutorial that I did on the muskins. Now I want the, uh, the breather here to be just over an eighth of an inch. And then I can push that out with my finger. And that will sink uh, because I've used obviously the, uh, the 260 barbless hook. It's a heavy wire gauge so it will sink but it will sink very slowly. And if you want it to sink even slower, you can use your dubbing brush to tease out some of that seals fur. And you can also treat your post and seals fur with a bit of gink or whatever your preference is for floating. I hope you found that of some use. And if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please think about clicking the button there. I would really appreciate your support.